Hello scientific genius people, how are you? Today we are going to start a lecture series on interference that is the wave phenomenon and we will be continuing this series and we will be discussing about various factors that causes the interference then intensity equation, fringe width equation, path difference equation and I will be explaining uh, this lecture series very simply with the help of vector addition only no bigger mathematic con mathematical concepts over here right so stay tuned and watch the complete lecture series for the complete and easiest understanding of uh, the interference pattern so here what do we have is here we are having two sources of light s1 and s2 these s1 and s2 are emitting light and the light which they are emitting has say for example frequency f1 wavelength lambda 1 the amplitude of this wave is say a1 so the intensity is i1 and similarly frequency of these waves are f2 lambda 2 a2 is the amplitude and finally the intensity of these of this second wave is i2 so the wave from here and the wave from here they are going to superpose with one another where on the screen so this is the screen and now if i find the midpoint this is the midpoint from where if i draw the perpendicular bisector it meets at this point which is called screen center center of the screen s1 s2 perpendicular bisector wherever it meets the screen that is called the center of the screen correct so where is the interference or where is the superposition going to take place everywhere on the screen so you will be getting the fringes at different different location so i have just drawn two light waves in the upward direction which is not which is not i mean uh, the complete information the waves are also going down meeting here waves are coming straight meeting here waves are also going over here and meeting so there is an interference pattern formation of dark and bright fringes which is formed over here so what happens is the crest of one wave may fall on the trough of another wave crest of one may fall on the crest of other trough of one may fall on the trough of the other so there are various possibilities and we will be discussing in the upcoming uh, series so right now we are our just focus is to understand what is happening over here what is formed over here and these wave equations and then as discussed as the heading states that the relationship between path difference and phase difference and in the next video you will find what is path difference and its expression right okay so what is going to happen is the wave from s1 s1 source of light it is going to reach say point p and it travels a distance r1 and from s2 the second wave travels a distance r2 and reaches at point p so there would be some path difference phase difference right don't consider these as the heavy terms we'll understand them very easily now we might like to understand what is light and what causes the interference pattern over here so this is a picture in front of us light is basically an electromagnetic wave so this is an electric field part and this is the magnetic field part but as I have written cross over here we are not going to talk about the magnetic field because the fringes that you see over here on the screen is an outcome of superposition of electric field waves only because when the magnetic field waves they superpose we don't see anything we don't visualize anything so the visual perception on the screen is purely due to the superposition of electric field vectors now you can see that this wave is a transverse wave which is moving in say for example x direction and the amplitude of this wave is capital e right so now i would like to recall a few of the concepts so we know that y x t is equal to a sine omega 1 t or omega t minus k x plus phi this is the equation of the traveling wave and this is the displacement this is the amplitude this entire thing this entire angle is called phase where this phi is called initial phase omega 
is equal to 2 pi f the angular frequency k is 2 pi by lambda this wave is moving actually in plus x direction that's why there is minus sign over here so this is an equation of uh, traveling wave moving in positive x direction so here we will write we will try to write down the equations of these two waves so here since i told you that this is an electric field wave so instead of y i am going to write down small e now that is equal to capital e sin omega 1 t minus k1 r1 plus phi 1 and this is the equation of the first wave this is first wave and similarly e2 is equal to capital E2 the amplitude sine again omega 2 t minus k2 r2 plus 5 over 2. So these are the equations of the electromagnetic waves or light waves which are coming out from here and meeting at point P right. So this is capital E vector of one wave so you can call this as wave number one so this becomes capital E1 right okay and from this point to this point this distance is lambda 1 it is the wavelength of one wave correct and the speed of the electromagnetic wave electromagnetic waves are same as the speed of light 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second correct okay so now this is the phase of first wave this is the phase of the second wave and now what am i going to do is i am going to find the phase difference so this phase phase of 2 minus the phase of 1 so phase of 2 minus the phase of 1 is called the phase difference that is equal to this expression minus this so omega 2 minus omega 1 t then plus k1 r1 minus k2 r2 plus 5 2 minus 5 1 some of the viewers might be getting confused that sir I have taken this as x and you have taken here as r it is because this is the wave moving in pure x axis whereas this wave is moving in x and y plane it is moving in plane so it will have x component and y component both so that's why r vector right and now since they are both are having different wavelength different frequency different initial phases then they are traveling unequal distances that's why these equations are different right so actually i must specify this is e2 and this is e1 so instead of a1 we can also write down e1 right one and the same thing now intensity is proportional to square of amplitude so if i take the amplitude of this wave bigger than this will have larger intensity compared to this one okay now i am making the most important assumption of coherent sources coherent sources means these two sources are emitting light of equal frequency f1 is equal to f2 lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 then if f1 is equal to f2 then automatically omega 1 omega 2 will be equal k1 k2 will be equal then i am taking their amplitudes also to be same so square of their amplitude that is intensity will also be the same initial phases are also same so that means the phase difference would be zero so by making this assumption this bracket will get cancelled this will get cancelled so the phase difference will be equal to since instead of k1 k2 i can also write down k so k r1 minus r2 the most important equation that we wanted to derive so this is called phase difference delta 5 that is equal to 2 pi by lambda multiplied by r1 minus r2 this is called path difference i am representing this as delta x and this is called phase difference and this is called path difference right okay so this is the first lecture in which you have understood the basic parts now what is this setup actually so i'll show you over here you can see that these two are s1 and s2 which are called slits 
slits are just an opening so what you are seeing over here is the top view from here that means our eye is looking from the top and you are viewing this as s1 and s2 so these two are slits and these two are not actual sources we have only one source which produces light it passes through one slit and to make it more coherent the light waves come out from here so something like this happens these are the light waves then they come out from here then these light waves touch slit s1 and s2 so from s1 and s2 the light waves come out and then there is an uh, superposition and finally we get the uh, pattern on the screen so these waves come out from slit 1 again the wave front divides from s1 and s2 then there is an superposition and finally we get the fringes about this don't worry we will be taking up this in our next lecture also so this is the basic setup so s1 and s2 are called coherent sources s1 and s2 are called coherent sources so the slits themselves they behave as the coherent sources just remember one very important thing that these two are not different sources of light no this is one source of light then these two are slits so whatever you are seeing over here are the slits so guys hopefully you have enjoyed the explanation if you have any doubts do comment in the comment section and watch the complete lecture series on interference so that you will have no doubt in this topic thank you for watching the video